Hello, everyone. This is Chris Frederick with the Stretch to Win Institute, and I'm so excited to be here with Paul Mettler, uh, a fellow physical therapist, and much more than just a physical therapist. He's the developer of something called DFR, Dermal Fascial Restoration. So welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks for having me, Chris. Appreciate it. Oh, you're quite welcome. I'm really excited about this because I'm seeing scars in, fasc in uh, uh, cadaver dissections I've been doing. I uh, just, yeah, I just did one with John Sharkey. And okay. uh, yeah, clinical anatomist from Ireland. Yeah. And um, we were at Ohio State at the medical school. And I just did it like a month ago. like eight Really? Months. Yeah, it was very, very exciting. This was uh, cada uh, cadavers that were embalmed. But I have spent a bunch of dissection workshops with cadavers that are unembalmed. Uh-huh. So I got to really feel and see with my hands and with the, the blade how scar tissue is manifested in the cadaver. Right. But without specifically talking about that right this moment, we'll get to that a little bit later. later. Why don't you uh, be, you know, take a few minutes to introduce yourself, uh, what do you do, and maybe talk about how you came out with DFR. Okay. So, um, yeah, I'm a doctor of physical therapy. I've been in practice for almost 40 years now. I had a private practice for 30 years, and it was uh, in Champaign, Illinois. And I sold that recently. Um, and in my private practice, I had uh, discovered a, a treatment method specifically to target uh, densification and stiffness in the skin and the, the layers below the skin. Um, came upon that quite accidentally, but uh, it really has been immensely beneficial to a lot of different uh, musculoskeletal and neuromusculoskeletal clients that, that I had in my career. And I'm uh, currently in Chicago, and my plan is to uh, focus on, on getting uh, dermal fascial restoration uh, into the hands of as many uh, clinicians as I can, because I think it's uh, a very valuable tool to have to enhance anything that you're currently doing in the manual therapy realm. And I've done a lot of uh, clinical research uh, over the years, like for the past uh, 30 years, actually trying to understand what it is that uh, we're doing when we actually uh, find these thermal fascial restrictions or densifications and, and then cork them in very precise ways and create immense change without creating trauma to the tissue. Uh, and so that's all that's fascinated me. And so th I, that's uh, my goal right now. And we're, we're trying to, to uh, you know, we're at the ground level. Uh, I, I consider myself at the ground level and mm -hmm. Chris and Ann are at the 50th floor. <laughs> where, 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 what they've done with their uh, treatment methods and things like that, but uh, I, you know, I just I'm fascinated by what they have done and I'm very impressed by it. Well, thank you for your kind words about our work. But um, I have to say, I did take a course. Um, I highly recommend it, and um, there are a ton of testimonial videos that are pretty impressive just to see the application of DFR with all kinds of patient conditions. It was very, really good to see on real patients as opposed to theory or just words. Um, so thank right. you. Right, and one of the reasons I, I got the videos was because when I was uh, initially discovered, you know, these, these restrictions that you can actually see, and you can feel them uh, quite readily once you learn how to do that. But uh, one of the things that uh, you know really drove me to do the videos was because I would see results I'd never seen before with my mm -hmm. patients, mm -hmm. and I would tell others about it, and and I could tell they didn't believe it, and I was having a hard time believing it. So I thought the only way to really capture this is video, and that was the early days of video, and I mounted a video on the ceiling and video of my patients while I was treating them. And yep. then I, you know, I've got their whole kind of their, their uh, history of what they've kind of been through and, 
and uh, different uh, uh, interventions maybe that they've tried. And then I added the DFR to the, which initially was called the Bentley release technique, MRT, but um, I changed it to DFR because with the ultrasounds, I could see that we're actually making significant uh, change to the dermis and to the uh, sub subcutaneous uh, tissues in the fascia and restoring the health of that tissue in a way that, you know, I didn't think was possible. Well, let's so, talk about that. Um, yeah. for, since we don't have images to show, right? Let's describe, if you don't mind, uh, take us through a little journey through skin down to where you feel and have seen on evidence where the, well, we know scars can go from skin to bone. Yeah. But, but based on evidence, your your research, and I'm just put, keeping my cat from going in the screen, you may see a cat, but the cat <laughs> pretty popular so this may become a cat video too yeah right <laughs> if you take us from the skin where you see the scar yeah and down to where in your experience you've seen scars go as deep as where you feel you have an influence with your work can you just take us through that little journey that visual journey so we can picture it in our heads yeah well um uh, when, when you if you look at at a, a dermal fascial restriction which is essentially a scar. Basically, it's, a, it's not an incision, but it's a very strong densification of the uh, collagen within the dermis, as well as the uh, superficial and deep fascial tissues. And um, when, when, you, uh, when you tension the skin, it looks completely normal until you tension. But I use these finger pots to put on my fingers so I don't press down on the skin you actually catch the skin at the surface level with, and almost like you had a suction cup and you really tension that skin. And when you tension it, if it looks kind of white or, or kind of a, a, a dull color, it's, it's probably got some adhesion in it because it should look pink. It should look very pink. If it's got good blood flow, if it's got good circulation, but once the collagen fibers start to densify, and that the the uh, free spaces you know diminish and you have less fluid flow, then when you tension the tissue, it looks entirely different, and the patients will feel an immediate uh, sensation that they won't feel if the uh, band is not there. If you tension the skin and they just see and you see like a pink kind of color on a Caucasian, um, then they'll just feel pressure. But if there's a, a white band uh -huh. of tissue, when you tension it, they feel like something's sharp, like some, you're taking needles or sticking them or something like that with, a, with, a, with something very sharp. And then they can also feel heat sensations, but it's immediate when you tension it. I mean, it, it's not a delayed thing. It just right away. Well, sharp. So, so the skin itself is connected to the subcutaneous, the superficial adipose tissue through the reticular cuticus fibers. Mm -hmm. So there, there's just a whole network that drops down from the skin of mm -hmm. collagen fibrous tubular type structures that connect all the way from the skin down to the bone. And they okay. showed that at the, on the poster, the, the Fazio people showed that mm -hmm. uh, poster at the Fashion Research Conference. Mm -hmm. um, so there's this internet uh, uh, there's web network that connects all the way down. So all these collagen uh, fibers are, are connected together. So when you tension the skin, you actually create movement as well as deep as four centimeters. I've, I've, I have video of that on my, my high frequency ultrasound. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very clear that you create enormous amounts of movement. So you are you saying... Are you saying that you can influence the tissue, the scar tissue on down? That's my cat, Clancy. Okay, Clancy, it's all fine. It's <laughs> loves to be on my Zoom. Clancy, what's on? <laughs> Clancy, he's 17 years old. <laughs> he has a lot to say. Yeah. So uh, are you saying that you can influence the scar from a superficial level? Because you, you're not going to push d uh, down all of my impression is you're not trying to push down, you said, because no. you're not going to try to get down to the bone and manipulate the scar this way, no. right? Not at all. No. And your, your face says no, and your head's wagging no. But you're saying whatever depth you work at, you can influence it down to the bone as far yeah. as that. So yeah. four centimeters. Four centimeters. 
That's about how many inches? That's two inches. Yeah, that's pretty significant. Yeah, and you can see it on on the on the high frequency also. It just moves like crazy down there. So here's an an now. Can you see that? Oh yeah. It's a green web uh, material. Yeah, it's not showing up very well on my screen, but okay. Yeah, it's kind of like a right there is good a net. Okay. Yes. So okay. If, if you watch, if I if I tension the top here, there's movement happening all the way right down. Okay. Is there any way, is there any way you can put your hand in in that net, like one hand, and then pull it, or like, no? Like, finger? inside of it or yeah, like a glove and then pull it with the other hand because then oh. we could see oh, it like, even like that better. yeah we can see it even better now okay now oh yeah okay so if i pull on it like this oh, yeah. that, that works good you see but but i'm not doing what i do it is pull on it like from above like from above so from so above, when you right. do, when you do that right you create movement Oh, okay. real deep and you're trying to show... connect, this would be like your reticular cutis system right here mm -hmm. and because that skin is connected into the, all those layers below when you tension the skin at the top it influences everything below it so i'm going to give a visual because i saw this on the cadavers the reticulus mm -hmm. i'm not sure how to exactly say it reticulus cuticus or cutis or yeah whatever. reticular okay. cutis yeah reticular cutis i did see the skin uh, the adipose layer, the superficial fascial layer, I saw the cuticus and I literally saw the angular changes. And when we were moving it, you could see the cuticus follow it. So you, yeah. I can really imagine when you do this with the skin, the cuticus follows it when it's mobile. When it's immobile, it doesn't it's, move. That's right. It moves a lot less. Mm -hmm. And the, and when it, when it doesn't move like that, when you stretch it like that at, at, at the very top level and you don't press down, you just grip the top and stretch and because what you what you want to think about is that this is one interconnected web and if you press down you diminish the effects of what's going to happen when you tension at the top is that something so, you proved with ultrasound as well that you it, this doesn't this direct pressure down doesn't have the mobility yes. really yeah yeah compression is a much different type of response versus bidirectional tensioning so the you're bidirectionally tensioning. Would bidirectional stretching be the same word as tensioning to you? I would say so. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, because are you trying to? Well, but you know what you're very, doing. It's very precise, and and you you the the patients the the giveaway is when you tension it like that, the patients will feel a very sharp needle-like sensation that that's there if it's normal. Do you think you're disrupting scar? And then once you start to manipulate it, tension and and torque it and twist it, you you get a lot of torsioning that's happening. So you get a lot of shearing action, a lot of shear forces happening within the the network matrix of that fibrous tissue below the skin. Mm -hmm. And you can see that on the high frequency ultrasound too when I when I do that. I mean, you can just see it crazy amounts of movement. So if you uh, take us through a little bit, if you're on a scar from the very beginning, you would uh, use I would, your I would use the finger cots so I, I can grip the top layer. And, and, and then I test it multi-directionally, every direction. Every not, direction. Just in, not just in line with the scar. Not just, no, you test it multi-directionally. And then, and then you can tell when it's moving and when it's not moving. And the patients will tell you as well. I mean, unless there's a, if it's a scar that where it's, you know, the, the nerves are, are dead because of the scar, uh, then, then they may not feel what you, what you would expect them to feel. But the interesting thing is many scars that I've worked on, they become alive. Once you start to stretch on them, they start to wake up because they've been so tight. Their circulation is so impaired that once you start to, to free up those tissues so that the collagen fibers can move and the blood flow can get in there, the nerves come alive and, so they, they, and they, get, they get their sensation back. That's what I wanted to ask. So they yeah. get the mobility back of the scar, they get the sensation back. Exactly. Now, speaking of all that, what, so that's great. You took us to the scenario of your evaluation. 
you took us through your scenario of treatment. Just a little bit more about treatment. Do you pick the most restricted direction? If if they have yes. they, you know, you, little is it, I mean, is it always that way where one direction pre pretty much takes care of all directions if they have omnidirectional? No, uh, that's a great question, Chris. It's a multi-directional system. And so when you when you find the, the one that has the least amount of mobility and, and slide and glide, and that's the one you start with. And then once you restore the health and movement of that, then you, you go to the next layer below, and it may be a different angle. It you may mean, be- When you say below, do you mean deeper? Well, you, you're going deeper, but you're doing the exact same thing at the surface. Right. It's just that once you free up this, let's say you free up this angle here, but this angle is still tight. Ah. You have to get to that, but you can't get to it really well if you start with, you try and start with the one that's not as mobile. That, okay. That's more mobile. That's more mobile. You want to start with the one that has the least mobility. On a superficial progress, level. On a more superficial and, level. And progress your way through superficially to deep. So if you found a superficial uh, scar restriction, you go and free that up. Let's say you decided to go, let's say for argument's sake, in this direction, because that was the most hypo mobile, the least mobile. Mm -hmm. yes. And into it, into it, this is your first approach, your initial approach, superficial level. Then you reassess. Yes. You're saying that this could improve, but your reassessment may show now it's the, at right angles to it or another angle is restricted but you address it now, not on a superficial level, you go to a deeper level. No, you still, you're still, it still could be very superficial. It okay, could be, it. it could still be, it could be a multi-directional restriction okay. in the dermis, at, in at the dermis. level. Yeah. Level. Got it, yeah. got it. And actually what I find a lot of times is most of the restriction is in the dermis. The fascia, the fascia is easy to free up. It's the dermis that takes a lot more work to get free because it's a lot more dense. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's got our, a lot of collagen. For our listeners that don't know exactly where the dermis is, could you just go from skin to what? Where is the dermis? Well, the epi you know, there's the epithelial layer, which is the very top layer of the skin. Uh, epidermis. The bottom, yeah, the epidermis, which is like a millimeter, two millimeters deep. But then you've got right below that, the dermis, which is about you know, sometimes, you know, three to four millimeters deep. And then below that, you have the uh, superficial adipose tissue, which is the fat, basically. And then you have the superficial fascia membrane, which is a horizontal membrane that goes between the superficial adipose tissue and the deep adipose tissue. And then right below the deep adipose tissue is your, uh, epi your uh, epimesium so that you, you have the covering of the muscle. So it's all interconnected system from the skin all the way to the muscle and to the bone. It raises so many questions. Um, all that's very clear, all that's very clear. Then I start thinking about how scars influence the muscle if they're from skin. They may, need, they may not even be down to the muscle, but have you found in your evaluations that the scar that is not, they don't have a scar, let's say in the epimyceum or in the muscle, but above that, superficial to that, and it's very restricted. Does that impact? I would say, you know, we all think logically it impacts range of motion. Does it impact, uh, you know, locally and maybe even globally when they try to move their arm, they feel maybe feel oh, better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What about strength? Does it actually impact the muscle in terms of the neural, neural activation strength wise? Have you seen that in any well, of your I mean, it would depend on where the scar was, but um, if it, if, if the scar is, uh, you know, the, the muscle itself is, is, is uh, surrounded by fascia. So if the superficial fascia is tight, it will influence the gliding and the ability of the tissue down to the muscle. So if you free that up, it would probably influence the neural circuitory uh, elements to the muscle because a lot of the neurocircuitry goes from this you know skin down to the muscle sure well so. um that that's an excellent explanation i'm seeing it even more in my mind's eye and i think our listeners will also i'm thinking now of slide glide and i'm thinking of hyaluronon ha hyaluronic acid and yes. and 
the interstitium that Neil Thies right. has spoken about, the newly discovered <laughs> organ yeah. in 2018, it was published. Maybe he just they discovered it like 2017 and wrote about it, or 2000, maybe earlier. I don't know. Uh -huh. Can you speak on that? Whatever you can speak about sure. on that with hyaluron on, as well as the interstitium. I'm getting real excited about the fluid aspect of this, restoring. We know blood flow, you mentioned blood flow, but what about those other interstitial fluids? And yeah. And HA. Right, yeah, sure. Well, it, again, if you think about it, the extracellular matrix, which is where the collagen, the hyaluronin, um, you know, your glycosaminoglycan, your proteoglycans, all that fluid type fluid, uh, a tissue is in there. It's in the extracellular matrix. Well, the skin itself, is almost all extracellular matrix. There are no very few cells. And the fascia itself is a highly extracellular matrix as well. So if you if you think about that, what's in the extracellular matrix is collagen, elastin, hyaluron, proteoglycans, glycosaminoglycan, you know, all these things, the hyaluron is what allows tissues to glide and slide mm -hmm. and so if that and and then it goes into the theory of like stecco where they they say that you know there's water that's bound and unbound in the extracellular matrix because when the tissues don't slide and glide there's more unbound water so then the water becomes bound onto the uh the hyaluron and then that allows for more gliding and movement because mm -hmm. that's that's what has to happen that's what healthy tissue is and so what we do when we manipulate that tissue like that without traumatizing it not creating bleeding or anything like that is you actually restore the reorganization of those collagen fibers and there that when you do that you're crazily moving the extracellular matrix you're creating all kinds of mechano transduction, mechano strains to that tissue. And that's again, where your immune system is as well. And a lot of lymphatics. So it's, it's immensely important that you restore health to the skin and to the fascia, because that's, that's, that's the system that allows everything to be healthy below it. Agreed. I mean, there's so much in the superficial layers, the superficial fascia, that um, with the immune system and all every system of the body is crisscrossing in the fluid exchange between waste coming out and nutrition coming in through the interstitium, through the capillaries. Um, it's it's a very just a, a live area of metabolic activity and how this just can all get blocked from scars. It's exactly. really yeah. And it, and like, again, it. I, it's not necessarily a scar when you think of it like an incision. When you have a flat densification in the skin and the fascia below it, that's, that's really a type of scar. It's an okay. immobile, it's an immobile, uh, uh, it, the tissue is not able to move because it's adhered together. And that's what a scar is. A scar is an adhered tissue. So you're defining two different things. You're talking about, let's say, a surgical incision. Yes. Person at surgery, it's obvious that's the history. That's that scar from surgery, iatrogenically <laughs> caused. Yes. Then you have, you're saying, a non-surgical scar. No cut of any kind went through the skin. Exactly. Where does, that come? Where does that come from? It comes from inflammation. It's all related to inflammation. This system, this system is all interconnected. And, and when you damage the muscle, those, <laughs> those, those in, inflammatory, uh, you know, uh, everything becomes inflamed. It's not just the muscle. It goes into the fascia. The fascia connects into the skin. The whole thing becomes densified. So it, it's very, in chronic pain patients, even in neuromusculoskeletal uh, spasticity and all that, that's, that's all related to some type of an inflammation. 
So a couple of things come to mind, um, a bone, like a muscle bruise where you get an impact in football and you have this contusion. Yes. That, some of them are really bad where, you know, right? They form these fixated clots sure. of blood and some of them calcify. Yeah. I don't think anyone thinks about mobilizing the skin into the superficial layers just to start mobilizing the areas to free things up. They try to pull it out maybe right away with a, a you know a needle and just pull out extra basation, just try to get all that out. If it becomes a problem or it becomes like a compartment syndrome, right? It gets trapped. Right. But that almost like opens up new sort of ideas of how to treat it using your concepts of the densification that's starting. It's in process. It hasn't occurred yet. Yeah. We, know about, we know about chronic. It's thickened tissue like Helene right. Long has shown with also ultrons, ultrasound right. studies with chronic, like chronic nonspecific low back pain, how the densification through the lumbar area has just thickened it and lack right. of slide glide. Right? right. Then you have the this acute injury that I just mentioned to the soft tissue that can create that long-term densification after it heals. Can we get at it on a subacute level to treat it? And I'm and, and it makes me think even whole hand. You could mobilize it, yes. I mean, what you yeah. said, what you do very specifically on a surgical scar. Yeah, right. I, I guess that that's my question. What would you do on a broadly densified area, like a, bi a big quad that just, you can tell it's not moving. Yeah. And yeah. What would you do yeah. with that? I would, I would, again, I'd do the same approach. I would find, I would test the skin for multidimensional uh, mobility. I would find where the densification is, is the the greatest, in which direction you get the least amount of bidirectional tension or stretching of the skin. And then I would start there. I would, I would focus right there. And, and, and what will happen is as that frees up, then you'll be able to identify other areas that yeah. are, are still maybe bound down or don't slide and glide. Uh, but you won't appreciate those until you release that really most dense area. So when you assess and treat a densified area that's non-surgical scar, right? There is no scar, like no cut scar to the skin. Um, after you treat it in multi-directional and you feel like you've addressed all the multi-directional, do you try to actually go even deeper and do a similar assessment or not? Do you feel well, like you're, 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 you're always going deeper because as those as you get elastic movement at the top, you're engaging deeper and deeper and deeper. And as, as I've seen on the ultrasound, wow. you're moving as much as four centimeters deep. So as you start to create more stretch and healthy mobility at the top, you then start to engage those deeper tissues and you create health to the deeper tissues. Wonderful. It kind of reminds me of, you know, one of the first books on fascia was fascia the human tensional network with Schleip and all the contributors. That was 10 years ago. And then recently they, it, they published the second edition of the same book. And in that book, I didn't find a whole lot on the, the actual human tensional network. I didn't see a whole lot. And what you're saying is what I work with. I always think of, can we, I tell my students, I feel like we're adjusting the fascial net, if you will, or dealing with uh, balancing out the compression tension aspects of a tensegrity structure. Right. Do you have anything to say about what you're doing? With, it sounds like the same thing, like you're removing an area where things are tacked down. Yep. You don't have to glide slide. So uh, you know other areas, just like joints, may be hypermobile to deal yes. with that. The person still has to function. So you're going to yep. still reach down and do this and reach over and do that. And then moving through the dysfunctional tissue, other tissues have to take up that extra slack. And That's exactly up. right. Is that how you envision yeah. it? Yes, exactly like that. Yeah, yeah. So it's a tug and it's like what we show on our yeah. side of a client. This is your layer. It should be moving on all directions. I actually do this to clients. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. And then we're in here and trying to release things. So, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, it, it's just a different approach where you're actually, you know, targeting very specifically the, the most superficial densification and you're progressively restoring health from top to bottom. Can you give me, um, you have so many wonderful videos. Can you give me the story you always like to tell or the client that comes to mind where either they got missed by other um, practitioners because they really didn't look at this? 
Um, does anything come to mind in any body region, whether it's the neck, foot, ankle, anywhere? Oh, there's 90 videos on my my uh, DFRCE. They're, they're almost all like that because they had been there. Right. I'll give you one. Whiplash. Yeah. Whiplash. You have yeah. one on whiplash. And I thought, you know how many patients are dealing with this for years with chronic pain and it never resolves? And you have a wonderful video and showing how you work through the scar tissue. And then she just <laughs> can bend her head back exactly in the mechanism of, of injury, which is yeah. like the scariest thing for them. Exactly. And I, and I yeah. saw a wonderful result. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It works really good on whiplash. And, you know, I, I, I got in touch with one of my clients who he, she had, and I got the video on there. She's, she had a whiplash four years before she came to see me and she had, been through all kinds of medical, you know, tests and diagnostic tests as well as medical interventions, and she was really uh, having a lot of pain and problems. And uh, I saw her for four visits, which is crazy. And she totally it totally changed her. And and I talked to her twenty five years just this year. I talked to her, and she said it did not come back. Wow. Now that's crazy. Yeah. That's good, crazy. That's good crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that's good crazy. Yeah. So bringing it down to, to a close slowly, um, I'm thinking of, I, I have a diagnostic method that I've been using and I'll do it on a scar, for instance, that I can see. And let's say the person, um, even if they are trying to abduct their arm. Yes. Have some pain and it could be anywhere right? And the, you think it might be joint, it might be muscles as part of our differential. So I'll take my hand and I'll, pre I'll share the scar in different directions. Mm -hmm. So this is my way of assessing, is it from the scar? And I have found that is true where they can't abject their arm or if I move it and find the direction of ease that eases their movement, they're like, you just press the magic button. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like I give them a temporary treatment because yeah. I'm, I'm helping the tissue artificially mobilize. Yes. They don't have that slide glide. So I provide it. And then yeah. they're like, what did you just do? Right. You provide the slide glide. Yeah. It just it doesn't tug on there as much. Yeah. So I use the concept of that in my uh, differential, in my uh, movement evaluation. And I'm not sure if you use it that way, but you can. I use it when they stand. I use it in a functional position. Show me what you can't reach when you do this. And then, so I will do that to the uh, to, to the scar, but even if they don't have scar, I do it on the skin with the same idea. Where do they have densifications? Yes. And I'll vary it from finger, if it's a small region, to the whole hand, to even two hands, depending, you know, where it is. Yeah. Does that make it sense? Probably, it probably makes a difference on which, which direction you mobilize the skin. It really does. It, it's... Yeah. It, fully agrees with what you're talking about because it's not always predictable. It's not always like, oh, let me lengthen it in this direction thinking it's just short. It's right. not short. It's direction specific. Yeah, very direction specific. So that makes me want to recommend my level three, I mean, all of our students should take, I think, should really think about taking your course. But I teach this concept in my assessment that I teach to my level three more advanced students. They've been through right. two other levels. And yeah. I'm like, guys, you got to take Paul's ball, of course, <laughs> if you want to be real specific and then actually treat the scar. I don't teach how to treat the scar. Right. Yeah. So yeah. I would love for you to let the listeners know where can they get this training at this point. In our well, the, if, if you go to uh, dfrtherapy.com, that's our website. And then you have to, there's an enroll button on there. And you hit enroll to the to get enrolled into the course, and uh, then you're in. And it's an online course. It's uh, it's IPTA approved for six credit hours, and um, yeah, there's a wealth of information on there, and uh, including the clinical research that we've done uh, for dermal fascial restoration. Um, as well as uh, just a lot of uh, in-depth uh, knowledge for fascia, skin, uh, comparative uh, treatment techniques and methods. 
Uh, and then, of course, 90 actual patient videos of me working on different patients who've had all kinds of difficult musculoskeletal issues. Uh, yes. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. You do live workshops too, or just, is, is that's for the we, online class, right? We, we are, we're, we're starting our live workshops this year. Yes. Oh, great. I think, you know, once you get your live workshops going, then uh, you may have a little directory because now they are certified by you, right? Right. And you have a, a locator or just a list of people that you have trained and certified them. I'm sure your students wouldn't mind you if you did that. Now people can find them if they're in another state, you know, some other. Right. Things. Yeah. Yeah, we will definitely do that. On a last note, I wanted to congratulate you for uh, being chosen for your poster presentation, right? At the, was it the FRC? Yes. Also the ICMT. So ICMT, yes. Conforium of Manual Therapy, right? You were chosen. Right. Your, so you just say a few words uh, for both the FRC and ICMT. What was your, what were you chosen for, for your paper? My poster was, uh, it, it was related to, can you create uh, subcutaneous movement, you know, by doing what I'm doing. And I used the ultrasound to show that you could do that. Right. And so that's what it was. And I won the overall award for the poster uh, presentation at the ICMT. Yeah. And then the FRC? And the FRC, uh, I did an oral presentation at the FRC. Right. And uh, yeah, that was related to uh, biomarkers that you might use for research purposes to actual study uh, tissue densification and imaging, using imaging to see if you can change, you can quantify the change in the amount of tissue uh, densification. So congratulations on that. It's really great to see a yeah. clinician who has really done the research and did all the videos. I mean, you left no stone unturned to, to really show whoever's interested that this stuff works and you have the basically the science and the thousands of clients to 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 prove that. So yeah, yeah. And we're we're in the process of getting a study going with Harvard. So we wanna wow. we wanna get a get a study with them and and do some solid research. Yeah, and thank you for just your dedication to it to help so many people that they reach the end of the road. They think, uh, you're my last hope, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard that before. It's been that way for 30 years. <laughs> you know, it's like a lot uh, of responsibility, but you rose yeah. to the occasion and look, look yeah. where you are today. So, <laughs> Well, thanks, Chris. Yeah, I, I would love to do a demo on you and and uh, or somehow, I, I just think that what you're doing and what I'm doing, there's a lot of synergies that uh, we're, we're, you know, one could help the other one. I just, it just seems to me that there's an awful lot of potential there. Like, yeah. uh, you know, because once I free a, uh, an area and restore health to it, I want to try to, you know, maximize the longevity. And that's one of the things that I found is that a lot, most of these patients, you do get long-term benefit. But mm -hmm. if I were to add something that you find helpful that you're getting long-term benefit from, the combination of those two seems like it would be immensely helpful. I totally agree. And I'll be looking more into this, uh, the collaboration, the integration of both really good therapies and how can it make both you know work together even better. So I'll bring that to a close. Stay online so we can chat a little bit after we end this sure. uh, and paul mettler uh creator inventor of uh, dermal fascial restoration or dfr that's what we've been talking about and one more time the your website where they can find the course and the information uh, dfr therapy.com perfect yes so thanks very much again paul uh you're welcome chris until we meet again yes sounds great Bye-bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.